Hello, welcome to my class. So today we're going to talk about function and the function notation. So function is a root for the relationship between an input and an output. So usually we say input is the independent variable and output is the dependent variable in which each input value uniquely determines one output value. Oh, I'm missing the output. So, and then we will say the output is the function of the input. So here I found a coffee shop menu. This is a template. I found it on um, Essay. So from this, from this menu, do you say, is this, would you say, um, is price a function of the item or would you say it's the item a function of the price which one do you think is more accurate think about it when we define a function we'll say the output is the function of the input so is the price is determined by the item or the item is determined by the price well, in a coffee shop, we know that you went to at the cashier, you order the food that you like, and then the cashier will tell you that, hey, this food is $2 or $3, right? So in this case, I would say, which one is the input? So the input should be the item that you want to order, and the output should be the price. So when it comes to that, since the output is the function of the input, we will say the price is a function of the item. So here's another example. Consider that the bank account that you have, if you have a bank account, and then the bank account information, what will be the function? Is your balance a function of your bank account number or the bank account number is a function? So, what would you say? Is your balance A function of your bank account or is your bank account a function of your balance? So to identify that, the first step we need to know is which one is input, which one is output, right? So when you look into your balance, you need your bank account, right? So if you put your bank account, then you will identify your balance. So in that case, the bank account is the input your balance will be your output. So I would say your balance is a function of your bank account. Okay, so the next part I want to talk about is notation. So now from our previous two examples, I have what? The, the coffee price or the item the price is a function of an item or the other one would be your balance 
is a function of your bank account. So math is like you look at the sentences, you try to concise it and turn it into a math language. How would you do it? Well, first of all, instead of using the price, I will use P, right? It's a function of an item. I will use I for this one. So when we write it, I will say P is a function. I will use F of I. Well, that still looks really complicated. So the easier to do is I can write it as P is. We learned that how to transfer algebraic expression is usually means equal sign, right? F of I. So that's how we represent the function. Okay, let's try the next one. Your balance, let's use B as balance is a function of your bank account. Account, let's say, account, you usually have your account is as a number, so we use the notation N. You can use different one, it doesn't matter. So to make it easier, we have B equals to F of N. So we usually use F to represent the function. So you've seen that a lot, such as, um the height function right when you see um you put in a name of a student and then your output would be their height so you will have height is the function of someone's name i'll use n h represent height Sometimes they want to make it even more easier. You just use H and N, and this is P and N, and this one would be P of I. I know it looks really complicated. If I write it something down, you will understand it totally. The most common thing that we see is Y is the function of X. This is the most common notation that we see. So remember that Y is the output x is the input f stands for function remember y is equal to f of x okay so here's another example so now i want to introduce a function notation to present a function that takes an input the input is the name of the month and gives us the output the number of days in that month what's that mean that means I want the output is the date equals to a function of the input, which is the month. So, for example, if I put in January, so the output would be the number of days in January would be 31 days, right? Um, let's not use February. <laughs> what about March? If my input is March, your output should be 31st as well. But if I put April, so your output should be 30th. And goes on, goes on, goes on. So this is the function notation. So there's another way to do it, which is the table as a function. Instead of writing it down, I can just use the month and then the days, the number of days in that month, which is our output. So month, we have 12 months, right? I'm just, I'm not going to write all of it. And which one, which month will determine the number of days, such as January, we have 13 first day, 31 days. February, let's say 28 days, and then March with 31 days, April with 40, well 40, 13 days, and May is 31 days, go on, oh, August, I also have 31 days. So 
But yeah, that's another way to represent a function. Use a table. Sometimes. Here is another example that I found online, which is the normal height for boys. Um, given by the age, these can also we can write it down as a represent as a function. What would be the input? So the input should be the age of the boy, and the output would be the height of the boy. That's on average. For example, when you're one year old, the output would be what? The mean should be 36 centimeter. So the unit would be centimeter. And then when you're two years old, the average height would be 88 centimeter. When you're three years old, your average would be 95. And when you're four years old, you're 103. One tenth. When you're six years old, you will be one sixteen, and go on and go on. So this is another example of a function. We convert this into a table. So earlier, when we talk about function by the definition, we know that hey, function. It's a root for a relationship between an input and a output, which each input value uniquely determine one output value. Uniquely is really important because here are some examples. I have input, output. Let's say input is two, five, eight. Output is one, three, six. Is this a function? Yes, this is a function because each input uniquely determined one output. Okay, now another example. I have input and output. Let's say input is negative 3, 0, 4, and output is 5, 1, 5. Is this a function? Okay, this is still a function even though these two outputs are the same. It doesn't matter because each input uniquely determined one output. This is still a function. But now look at this example. So I have a negative 3, 0, 0, and then this is 5, 2, 1. So now take a look. This input determine uniquely one output. However, zero, they can determine by two output, right? Because the zero, if you put in an F zero, they could equal to two, or they could equal to one, which means this is not uniquely, the output is not uniquely determined by the input. So I would say the third one, this one is not a function. This is a function. So, so for the first and second table, each input corresponding to exactly one output. But the third table does not define as a function since the input value, zero, corresponding with two different output values. So this is really important. Please take a note about that. So the last part is how do we evaluate or solve the function? Okay, if I give you a table, I have and is a function and of q. And just make up random number. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the output would be okay. So how do we determine it? Which one is input? Usually the first row would be the input, the second row would be the output. So if I have Q 
1. What's that mean? That means when n equals to 1, q equals to what? So where we should find the function? When n equals to 1, q is equals to 8. So q1 is equals to 8. Another example is if I have a q4, this is equal to what? So q4 would be what? When n equals to 4, q4, q is equal to 4. Let's do another one. If I have a q6, which is when n equal to 6, qn is equal to 0. What about the opposite? If I tell you that, hey, if q equals to 5, n equals to what? I need you to solve it. So now we look at, let me use a different color. Let's use um, an orange. Let's say, okay, I have a q. q is equal to 5, right? In here, I'm trying to find the value of n. So n is equal to 3. That means when q equals to 5, n has to equal to 3. Another one is, let's say, qn equals to negative 1. qn equals to negative 1 means what? Um, let me use 6. 6 is easier. Just a little bit, not easier, it's more confusing. So you, you look at here, or oh, this one, the triangle or the circle. Think about it. Not triangle, a uh, triangle or the circle, yes. Which one? It's the triangle. Why is that? Because they're giving you the value of Q, right? Sometimes they write Q equals to 6. Sometimes they write QN equals to 6. But they mean the same thing. That means they're giving you the value of the output, and you're trying to find the value of input, which means when N equals to 2, QN equals to 6. Another example is when QN equals to 3, which one should you find? Not this one, okay? Should be here. Qn means when q equals to 3. Sometimes they write q of n, sometimes they write q equals to 3. And then n is equal to 7. Okay. So sometimes they will use a graph. Think about that. They give you a graph. So now let's take a look at this graph. So this is a linear function because it's straight line. So now let's take a look. Usually, horizontal axis represent the input and vertical axis represent output. So, let's say, if I want you to see f of 0 equals to what? How do you find it? So, f of 0 means when x equals to 0 would be in this dot, right? So, the function equals to negative 1 because y equals to negative 1 another one would be if i ask you about f of negative 5 that means which dot we're trying to find this one right when x equals to negative 5 the function equals to 1 but here let's try a different way if i given you the fx if i tell you that hey fx equals to let's say zero now what's that mean that means i'm giving you y this is equivalent to y equals to zero i'm trying to find x equals to what so when y equals to zero so this point is x right x approximately equal to negative 2.8 what if i tell you the fx equals to negative 2 now you need to solve for x so if i know fx equals to negative 2 basically i know that y equals to negative 2 which is here and I'm trying to find x. x probably is not 3. Maybe it's a 2.9. Not the best graph, but you see the ideas, right? 
One is giving you x, you're trying to figure out y. The other way is giving you y, you're trying to solve for x. So another way to do it is the most common way, which is they give you a function, such as they tell you that, hey, fx equals to 2s plus 1. And now they want you to say, hey, f of 2 equals what? f of 2 means you want to substitute every x with 2 into the function. So that means I have a 2 times x equals to 2. Parenthesis, I like to use parentheses, plus 1. So I will be more clear that I know that, hey, whatever inside the parenthesis represent x. So 2 times 2 plus 1 equals to 5. Or I have f of 0 means I need to substitute every x with 0. So 2 times 0 plus 1, which is 1. So the other way is to solve. If I know that hey, fx equals to 0, what's that mean? That means fx, this function, equals to 0. So I have a 2x plus 1 equals to 0. So I have a 2x plus 1 equals to 0. And then I try to solve for x. I subtract 1 on both sides. And then my 2x equals to negative 1 and divided by 2 on both sides. So I solve x equals to negative 1 half. So I want you to distinguish the difference between these two. f0 equals to what? Or they are given you fx equals to 0. That's the two differences. This is evaluate the value of fx. This is you trying to solve for x given y equals to 0. Okay. Um, let's try to do a little bit complicated one. Let's use a different letter. We've been using f and x. I want to use something like kn equals to n squared minus 2. Now, let's try to do this. So, what about kn of 3 equals to what? Well, again, this means what? You represent n with 3. No, not with that. You substitute n with 3 into the function. So I will have 3 squared minus 2. 3 squared equals to 9. 9 minus 2 equals to 7. Or k of negative 4. Okay, so this you need to be careful. That's why in previous example, I told you that, hey, I love to put a parenthesis for the variable, which is the lattice. Because if you represent n with the parentheses and negative 4, you know that when it comes to square, you need to square the negative as well. So I have negative 4 squared minus 2 equals to 16 minus 2. Negative negative become positive. So this is 14. You know, in my experience, lots of you didn't put a negative. So they end up write the function like that which is negative 4 squared minus 2. So you'll end up to get what? Negative 16 minus 2, which is negative 18. This is wrong. Because you're trying to represent the n with negative 4, right? So when they square, they square n. That means you need to square the whole negative 4, not just 4. Okay. So the next one is, let's say, if I say kn equals to 10, so and then solve for n. Again, if kn equals to 10, that means the whole function n minus 2 equals to 10. So I have n squared equals to 12. I add 2 on both sides. And then I take square root. I have a positive or negative square root of 12. From math, 19.7, you should know how to simplify this. So n should equal to positive and negative 2 times square root of 3. You need to simplify to the simplest form. 
Okay, so that's it for today's class. Let me know if you have other questions.